I'm Andy Batchelor, I'm the Operations Manager with the Environment Agency. I'm responsible for the Tidal Flood Risk Management of London, of which the Thames Barrier behind me is a key part in that system. I'm Matt Coon, I work for CH2M, I'm the Programme Director on Team 2100. Our contract is a 10-year contract to look after flood defences, including, as you can see here, the Thames Barrier. Unfortunately, the Thames Barrier came about as a consequence of a major disaster for the South East. In 1953, there was a storm surge that came down the East Coast. It swept up the Thames Estuary and places like Canby Island and Perfleet, the defences failed. As a result, the government decided that that risk was not acceptable and built the Thames Barrier, which is behind me here. The Thames Barrier was built with flood defences stretching 350 kilometres in, in total length. It was built in 1973, finally commissioned in 1982, and it was opened by the Queen, which shows the importance of this magnificent structure. What a lot of people don't realise is that you know, the, the defences in London are still at their 1953 level. So the project that actually made the Thames Barrier meant that we didn't have to raise those flood defences in the centre of London by three metres. So as you can see, the Thames Barrier behind me has 10 gates. The largest gates are 61 metres wide. The paint on the gates themselves weighs 50 tonnes, and each of the gates weighs half the weight of the Eiffel Tower. When they're in their flood defence position, they're as tall as an eight-storey building. So they're a significant structure stopping that storm surge getting into London um, and the rest of the South East. And why are they large? Because they've got to take a lot of pressure. They've got to stop the whole of that North Sea from coming in. So we have in, within the system the Thames Barrier, other associated large floodgates in Barking and Darford, but also over 300 kilometres of tidal walls, which are crucial for keeping those waters twice a day out of inundating London. What that does is protects uh, over 67 London Underground stations. It protects the Olympic site. It protects the sewer network. Uh, 1.3 million people live and work below the, below the tidal floodplain, so it protects those as well as well as £275 billion pounds worth of property. So it's a really significant asset. It has been said that if a flood affected London because the Thames Barrier wasn't there, it would have the same impact as the financial crisis in 2007. So not only would it have an impact on London, but also the UK, potentially Europe, and a, and a global impact. It was a major civil engineering project. But the beauty of this was it was a joint project. So it joined together all the engineering disciplines, be, that, be they from civil, mechanical, to electrical. And that's very much how it still is to today. The design is based actually on a gas tap. So if you imagine between each of the concrete piers uh, turning the circular gates, then that is the same as a gas tank. You're just shutting off water here instead of gas. Anything engineering has to be designed to meet certain criteria. The barrier itself was against a one in a thousand year tide in the year 2030. So we've actually challenged ourselves now and re-looked at that because 2030 is quite close. So we're actually looked to see what do we need to do to the year 2100. And the fantastic thing about the Thames Barrier Project is that this barrier is going to be extending its life to 2070. And I think that's testament to the engineers, the civil, mechanical, and electrical engineers that maintain it. Which means that by the time it gets to its end of life, it's going to be over a, well, nearly 100 years old, which is, which is pretty impressive. So although it's a, a moving structure, the majority of the whole of the system is, was designed by civil engineers. So you can see the gates here, that they are um, founded on significant civil engineering structures. At the time when it was being designed and constructed, it was one of the largest projects going on, if not the largest project in England. All of the major civil engineering companies were working on it. The challenge is, going forward, we will need a new Thames barrier in 2070. So the challenge for civil engineers going forward is come up with a design for that. So I almost throw that down as a gauntlet. So any students out there, any engineers budding want to take up the cudgel, how can we build what is Thames barrier 2 going to look like? So on our programme at the moment, for example, we have over 40 graduates and apprentices working on it, helping them develop their careers, getting chartered and becoming members and fellows of the Institution of Civil Engineers. So in my view, civil engineering is one of the most um, fascinating and interesting um, careers you can have. I guess particularly important is that we actually create things. So we don't just do spreadsheets and reports, we actually go out there and make a physical difference in the environment. So it's a completely rewarding career that I would recommend you get into.